Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? Yes! Dad, I'm hungry. G'day humans, Chris Dead from Fine here. I'm on the road today. I'm at Central Station, right in the middle of Fraser Island up in Queensland. Now I'm just going to give you a little bit of a tour of the campground here and tell you a little bit about my thoughts. So you can be prepared uh, to make the best decision possible when you're deciding where to stay on this beautiful, fantastic island and uh, what you may need to bring or not bring based on what I've experienced so far. You can see here, here's the entrance along one of the many sandy roads into, uh, into the heart of Fraser Island and that there is an electric fence to stop the dingoes. Right, uh, so this is where you come in. You get a little bit of a drive down here through a beautiful forest. So one of the things you need to know about this place straight away is it doesn't get much sunlight. So be prepared for that. You're not even going to. I couldn't get my solar panels to even register an input. Um, so you got this beautiful, unbelievable canopy above you, which is serene and ser surreal and definitely relaxing. Um, but you're not going to be able to charge off solar here very well at all. Um, and you can see this sign here, no noise after 9 p.m. Um, and that is, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, I've been really impressed by the respect everyone here has shown to each other in regards to noise. So, it was raining when we first got here. Um, not too bad, everything's out of sand, so pretty much every single site drains almost instantly. Um, you, you're not gonna be putting up in puddles despite the very, very leafy floor and canopy. Uh, the road's in, it's fine, it's just it's better than most of the roads to get here in the first place. Um, lots of caravans coming in, that type of thing, so no need to worry about that. You'll get from the ferry, we caught the ferry into, um, from River Heads, and um, yeah, like I could have driven any car here to be honest. Um, it's only when you start going down towards the beaches and stuff like that, you start getting to some Lake Mackenzie, that kind of thing, where you start to get to some ground, which definitely can't be done in your or we'll drive soccer mum's car like the one I drive. So, um, the campground's broken into two halves and there's a big toilet block in the middle. Now what they've done really well here, I mean, I think, it's, I think my wife said this was $27 a night. Um, so they've done a really good job with it. Um, every single site is flat um, and they're all kind of away from each other, not massively away from each other, like, some of the sites may be like four or five meter apart, um, but everyone kind of gets their own little space. So you got your head down this way here and you go to the second wing, I guess you could say, the campground. And I'll take you into the first wing, um, but there's very little difference between the two. Um, they're effectively mirror, mirrors of each other. Some sites are obviously very clearly caravan friendly. Um, some are very clearly tent friendly because you can't get a car into the actual site. Um, so the one thing you probably have to think about is if you're in a large group, it can, you, might, you can't bank on the fact you're going to get near each other. So people just spread out. So you can see there, it's obviously a trailer spot or a rooftop tent type thing. This mob here have managed to fit three onto the one site. And this guy's got a swag. No one's here at the moment, by the way. It's in the middle of the day. So everyone takes off pretty much before nine and gets back around four o'clock, going off to see the various bits and pieces on this island. So you've got these site after site after site, and as you can see, they're all flat as a tack. Um, the sites on this side, are, uh, on the first inlet, I thought were a bit bigger. Like you could definitely fit like a good caravan or two and a couple of tents in this one site, and a few people have, and the next one they have. Um, where a lot of the sites, are, some sites can only fit a dome. Um, so it's pretty varied. I'll take you up here just to show you. There's a track, the track on each side loops around, um, and there's this crossroads that go through to other little sites in between. And then you have sites up on the high road as well. So you can see here the camping one, right? So you've got these poles here to stop you from putting a trailer in there. So you've got your little car spot, a place to fit a tent and an awning. Um, so and this one here is actually specifically designated caravan as you can see on the sign there. So um, not too bad. That's actually probably the hilliest site I've come across. It's a little bit of a slope on that one. Um, you'll find these very regularly scattered around, um, which is water, not drinking water. 
um, and not water to wash up in because I don't want food scraps and anything like that just lying on the ground. Um, but you can see most of the sites are very flat um, and a lot of the sites also have tables and chairs built in. They've really done a good job. So I'm sure you can see the table and chairs there on that site. Um, so it's all on the high side here is mostly camping sites. But yeah, I'll take you up to one. So again, you can see a very flat spot. Uh, and most of these, like I said, have tables and chairs. This is one of the few that misses out. Um, so, one thing I can say that I was very happy about was the way that it says no noise after nine, and there's no noise after nine. Like it's really good. Um, yeah, there's been a bit of music and people having a good time and some chatter, but nothing you need to be concerned about. Here you go, you can see the table and chairs over there. Spot up there, table and chairs. Nice spot there. I mean, it's coming from New South Wales, we never get stuff this good. <laughs> um, so kudos to Queensland for that. Um, so the reason why we came here, and definitely for most of the people we've spoken about that have been here as well, is because of the dingo fencing. Now we have been down on the beach and we have seen dingoes down there. Uh, just with little kids. Not that I'm that worried about anything actually happening. Um, you don't have to stress in here. And because they're in this big fenced off area, it, like every afternoon, the kids are just been running around like maniacs and there's kids everywhere. Um, just having an absolute ball, so they've nailed that. Do a quick, hopefully there's no one in there. Of the toilets just to show you. So you've got a couple of drop toilets in there with like, I'm not going to go in there. And a bunch of showers down here, which... Um, oh, yeah. And you also come across these in various places because they don't want you washing up and throwing your uh, food litter anywhere that the animals might get attracted. So they ask you to do your dishes and everything in there. Um, so the showers take two dollar coins. Um, they basically, I reckon you got about 20% success rate of actually getting any hot water out of them. Um, we're here in Easter right now. And I would argue that a cold shower is far better <laughs> this time of year. Um, so maybe in the dead of winter, you might want that hot shower desperately, um, but I don't think you really need it. You're gonna do swimming every single day, so I don't think it's a deal breaker. Um, but yeah, we're like with some of our friends here are pumped like $16 worth of $2 coins in and still haven't had a hot shower, so um, it's pretty much just potluck. Um, there's no barbecue facilities or anything like that. Um, so there's that toilet block in the middle, which is obviously the main one, which I just showed you. There's another one down the far end here because there's this, um, some hiking um, spots, uh, hiking camping spots for people who don't have cars at all. Um, so, there's a little, so there's a little bit of a toilet down there. Um, as you can see, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful place. Really, really nice. Um, yeah, so just having the kind of freedom for the kids to just run around and run amok. I haven't put shoes on since I got here either. It's all sand and beautiful. A couple of uh, monitors walking around, kookaburras, um, kingfishers, um, blants. Saw a python. No, um, I haven't seen anything. No, there's spiders and all kinds of spiders, but nothing, nothing that's made me concerned. And uh, obviously, no dingoes in here. Just incredible old trees everywhere you look. Massive things. Look at them. 
Um, so you can see there, look, these are, this is on the, um, the furthest campground. I can't remember what it's called, Stingray or something, Sinray. Um, and you can easily just back your trailer or whatever into here. And it's been really interesting how transient the people are that are staying here. So we've had kind of different neighbors. We've been here for five or six nights now and we've had multiple different neighbors. People kind of come for a couple of days and then go, go stay somewhere else on the island. So this is when you go through the middle. So it still loops all the way down there. I'll show you just for the acts of completion. Um, so from here, the other place that the other thing we really like about staying here is just how it is central station and it's pretty central. Um, Lake Mackenzie is probably the closest swimming hole and the nicest on the island, I suspect. Nicest we've seen. And um, it's kind of on the way home from everywhere. So no matter what you do, you kind of end up driving past Lake Mackenzie to some extent. And that allows you to then kind of have a dip after every single day, really. Um, it's about half an hour from here to Yurong, which is where there's a general store, a pub, um, petrol, and it's your main entry to the beach to go to the main beach um, on the east side of the island. So it's pretty good access from here to everywhere. Um, you're just not going to get that any sort of sunset or sunrise or decent sun <laughs> at any point. Um, you don't get any wind though. So even when it's been really windy up the top there, you can hear the trees like blowing like crazy. Um, you don't really get any dramas down on the ground. So, and you know, the rain, you just, things don't dry that well once they get wet and you can't get any solar. So they're the only, they're the only backlash, I guess. Um, so that's sort of give you a pretty good idea of all the sites. And that, now I've got down to the bottom and it loops back around. So I'm not sure how many sites there are. There's quite a lot packed in here, but as you can kind of see from, you know, there's, a, there's someone over there, there's someone here, there's someone over there. Everyone's they've done a really good job just giving everyone a bit of space but any noise in here really travels. So um, you kind of got a bit of privacy, but um, it doesn't really help with noise. A lot of four wheel drive starting up and charging batteries for an hour, that type of thing is a bit annoying. But hardly, um, hardly enough to stop you from going. And there's that little other toilet block I was telling you about. Now down here, you've got um, some hiking camp, uh, some camp area for hikers. Um, I've seen a couple of people use it, but not particularly well used. And so you can just go off into the bush up here and there, and there's little flat spots for people with not much of a setup to enjoy. And if you walk further down there, you end up getting to the day care, day area where there's a really nice walk. And we did the walk today up to, um, what's it called? Basin Lake, um, a, a lovely walk through a rainforest, just filled with huge trees, um, a lot of wildlife. Um, you walk along this crist, uh, pristine creek to get there. We saw eels and catfish in the lake, and then saw the python up there. Um, and then, if you go all the way up to Basin Lake, which is about a 40-minute walk, you just get up to this lake right up the very top of the hill in a crater. Um, and there was no other humans there, just us. We didn't see any other humans the rest of the walk, actually. Um, so that's definitely worth doing while you're here on one of the days. Uh, just to actually take your swimmers with you and some food and some water of which we did none of those three. <laughs> um, maybe if I'd seen this video first, huh? Anyway, and there we are at the very furthest end. So that's a full tour there of the central campground at Fraser Island. Uh, if you're traveling with family, uh, whether you're in a group or on your own, I highly recommend it, um, simply because you just don't have to stress about your kids. I've driven past heaps of people camping on the sand dunes and I've looked longingly at them and gone, geez, it would have been lovely and nice to have been there to watch the sunrise and to see the ocean and go fishing whenever I wanted and all that stuff, absolutely. However, I've also seen numerous dingoes just wandering down the beach and that kind of constant fear would have really made it suck for me and my three young kids. So I think I would have spent the whole entire time stressing whenever they weren't in sight. Um, and most of the other people that are here have exactly the same mentality. Um, so there's heaps of kids which means there's heaps of them, things for them to do and play and have fun and not be in my hair. And on top of that, everyone sticks to the curfew and wants to get to sleep nice and early so they can wake up in the morning and have another big day. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the central campground here at Fraser Island. Definitely worth staying at. <laughs> As for me.
I'm back on the road. Mm-hmm.